Hello, welcome to my garage. Today I'm going to build a charging station for the electric vehicles. I have now the Vectrex and I have the project Volvo, which is not driving yet, but I can charge it already. So I need a type 2 charger and of course I don't want something out of the box because it does not have the functionality that I want or it is very expensive. So I have the open source Smart EVSE. I have the sensor box bought with it so I can use the load balancing and it can charge while my solar panels are working. I have a DC protection with it and I also have the RFID chip so I can use an RFID chip to start charging. I have an EV box bought for it so I can strip out a few parts I need. I use the socket and I'm going to use the contactor. The socket is going to be placed inside the wall, so it's a nice and clean solution. I have already modified the electrics from the house with a cable to the garage with a separate circuit breaker on it. I have chosen this smart EVSE because it is open source. I like open source because you can make it work like the way you want it to work. But there is also a basic program in it that should work fine for me. But if I want to change anything, it is possible. Uh, there's quite a community that is working with this system. So there is also a lot of information to be found when you get problems, there are people who can help you. If you want one of these, link in the description. If you like this kind of videos, don't forget to subscribe. Let's get started. I took a piece of an aluminium sheet to make a plate which I can screw to the wall. I made holes in it for the socket. It's in a dry environment so water tightness is not quite an issue here. To make the hole in the wall I started with, some, with a hole saw. Then I made the edges straight with the angle grinder. And a chisel was needed to get the parts, the pieces out of the wall. It's very soft brick, so this works very easy. So I could use a file to get the edges in the right shape. Next I drilled a hole through the wall so I could get the cables through. Here I extend the wires for the RFID reader, protecting it all with some heat shrink. And the wires from the lock actuator has to be extended and protected. I use some leftover cables from the charging uh, from the car. I use cable end sleeves to make a nice connection. I had labeled the cable so I know which one is which. Everything goes into a tube. So it's all nice and clean and this is how you're supposed to do it. I had misdrilled the holes, I didn't have the right size so I made a few adapter plates with the 3D printer and then glued them in. The parts that are going into the box are the smart EVSE, of course. A 40 amp contactor, it's f uh, ready for three phase charging, but I will only use single phase charging. And an energy meter, uh, this is the, from the EV box, this is also from the EV box. I don't know how it's going to work, if it doesn't work I will strip it out, but it can communicate with the smart EVSE if I am right. And besides that, this current monitor is going to be put in. This is to prevent I have to put in a very expensive circuit breaker. These are the parts that are going in. 
let's wire it up and then we'll take it from there. I use the old wire from the EV box. The high voltage wires are 6 square millimeter, so that's sufficient for 40 amps. I had to find some wiring diagrams for the EV meter. The rest of the schedules are all part of the manual from the Smart EVSE. I have temporary plugs wired in. The energy meter is connected, the contactor is connected and the Smart EVSE is connected. This is all connected to each other. We'll see what happens. I checked the socket so I have it the right way around. Now let's see what happens. It says ready to charge. So it's, it's working. Uh, it's at least it is on. Let's see if we can set up Wi-Fi. Setup is done with the ESP Touch app on your phone. You fill out the data from your network and the IS key, which is uh, given by the smart EVSE, and then you will get the address and it's set up. Next I wanted to check the DC protection. So I had it enabled and made a setup on which the, it should find a DC fault. Now let's see what happens. If that one goes to fault, that should go give an error. Yeah, press button to reset. So when it goes DC through it, it's locked. Here I mount the complete box to the wall. Then it's just putting the wires one by one in place. Here I also use cable end sleeves to make sure the connections are, are good. In goes the DC protection. Charging cables from the socket go into the contactor. The PP and CP wires are going into the connector. As with the RFID reader, the lock actuator, and the smart and the sensor box. Now I'm going inside and flip the switch, and then we'll see what happens. says ready to charge. Now let's turn off the power first. Power is off but I have solar panels so we'll turn them off too otherwise possibly I will get some power back. This is the sensor I've bought. It has an arrow in it that says the, that tells the direction. It's faced up now, so it has to go onto the wire like this. Clicks in place, and we'll put the connection around here. Here's a hole in the system, and then. It goes into number one and then just a regular cable also supplied with the sensor box that goes into the sensor box. This does not, this is not the power supply to the sensor box, it's got this power through the smart EVSE. This cable should send something like the direction of the current or, or something like that. I don't know exactly what it is, but it does not supply the power, but it has to be plugged in. It's connected to the smart EVSE. So when I turn the power back on, I should get through this sensor the current reading. And uh, then I will also know if there's cur uh, current going into the house or from the solar panels going out.
first I had the sensor box connected to the meter, but the meter has the wrong protocol, so it does not communicate with the sensor box. So I had to change it to this system. My house is now using 0.8 of an amp, so the solar panels are not back. They're not running yet. So this is what I can see on the smart EVSE app. I can now see what the current is doing. So I can now use smart charging and solar panel charging. Now you can see the solar panels are kicking back in, back on. I'm now delivering to the grid 0.7 of an amp and it's rising. Now I'm going to get a few RFID chips programmed to the system. You just select program or learn. Then you keep the RFID chip for the reader. And then it tells you card stored. Then I put the setting on enable all. I had programmed two RFID chips. It says now present RFID card. And when I present the card, light goes green and it says ready to charge. I have another meter. It's uh, Eastrom SDM230. It should be out of the box compatible with the smart EVSC. So let's take out this one. I put in this one. I have to change the wiring because the opposites of each other. Much, much later. No, I didn't cut the meter working. First, I had this one from the EV box in. This is this is possibly a Modbus meter. This this one may work, but it's not pre-programmed, so you have to do a lot of setup to get it working. So I didn't use this one. So I thought, let's be smart and buy the cheapest Eastron SDM 230. That was this one. I couldn't get it working because I was being stupid and buying the cheapest one. And this one can only send out pulses. There are appliances apparently that use that. Now I have this SDM 230. This one has the Modbus. That's the communication protocol that the smart EVSE uses. So I'm going to put this one in and this one should work as a Eastrom E1 meter. Let's get it in and see if this one works. One pair of pants later. Well, that was kind of interesting. This meter has the, it looks like it has the same connections as the old one. This is the old one, so I have checked the schedule and I saw, ah, uh, it's the same. And uh, not, it's not the same. This one has to be connected different, so I had, a, I had it wired as a dead short, so the fuse is blue the minute I turn on the power. Unfortunately, always when I do those stupid things, I miss it on camera. But luckily there's no damage, so I have changed the wiring again. This one is uh, feeding uh, the power goes in from the top and out from the bottom. The address, you can change it. You have to put it in. It starts with the one, but the smart EVC doesn't get the one. So I've changed it to 19. So when I've selected here the Eastrom E1, the EV address, address 19 mains that is my uh, main fuse in the house that's 40 amps i've put it on 39 the minimum i want to charge with is 6 amps the maximum 
is 16 amps. The circuit I use is for 16 amps. It's a bit higher, but that does not matter, I think. It starts for the solar with minus 6 amp. Uh, when the solar panels deliver more than 6 amp back to the mains, then the solar function starts running. When it's getting below the 6 amp, after 30 minutes it stops and it can import 1 amp. You can set this to every value you want. There's only one strange thing. It's now 1641 and it says 1441. So it's two hours off what it is uh, in real time. Now it's time to charge the motorcycle. First I plug in the cable, then with the RFID chip I start it up and then I can plug in the motorcycle. And when there's enough solar power it will start charging. Well, you heard the contactor and now you can see in the web interface what's happening. Now the motorcycle charged completely with the solar panels. So it charged between the 6 and the 16 amps. I decided to update the firmware for the newest version that might solve the time issue. I choose the latest uh, firmware. Two very boring minutes later. And now you can see it's updated. It's the latest version at this moment. You still can see all the you can see the same things as in the previous app. You can see the phases, the, what they are using at the moment. You can see the meter, what's happening. Uh, you can even start the solar charging with it. And the most impressive part of it is you can now do all the setups via the web interface. after you put in the pin code. It's quite a fun project to do. It's quite straightforward. Uh, things are just working as they are supposed to. Just look very well. You just have to look very good at the wiring diagrams. The problems I encountered were all due to my own faults on the wiring. It's now working fine. I'm happy with it and it's to get the EV meter in that was a bit annoying but that was on me. When you want to buy a meter that's compatible with the smart EVSC, so one of the pre-programmed ones, buy one with the Modbus and then it should be fine. That's it for this video. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope to see you on the next one.